first round in this contest, so the person who's come last, which is Liam Fox, uh, he drops out of the race. He has issued a statement tonight saying, of course, he's grateful for those who did support him. He says he's naturally disappointed not to progress further, but he says he doesn't regret standing in this contest. He said it was vital to stress the importance of national security in this debate and the need for a clear path to our exit from the European Union. He says he hopes he's achieved both these objectives. Uh, he hasn't said who he is going to throw his weight behind, but he says he's also sought to stress the need for experience as the successful candidate will have to take up the reins of government in less than nine weeks. The point being, of course, this isn't just about electing the Tory party leader, it's about electing the Prime Minister as well. Now, let's discuss this a bit with uh, two Conservative MPs backing different people, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who is backing Michael Gove, and Robert Helfman, who is backing Theresa May. Uh, first of all, what about Michael Gove's performance there? Maybe not as high as he would have liked? Oh, higher than I'd expected, actually. I thought he did really very well. Uh, and a lot of the people who voted for Liam are staunch or sceptics, so there's quite a good chance of him picking up more votes in the next round. But I think both uh, Michael and Andrew Leadsom did extremely well, and that's very encouraging from a Brexit point of view. And obviously you're supporting Theresa May, a pretty storming performance by her. Is this as high as it gets for Theresa May, if you like? Well, it was an extraordinarily good result, and it shows that she's a unifier because she's attracting people from all sides of the debates, people like Chris Grayling, who's one of the leading Brexiteers. But actually, she's also a, someone who is a genuine, compassionate Conservative. She's got huge strength of character, huge work ethic. She knows about security, and she'll provide security at home and abroad. And it's the, she's the kind of person that if we ever faced a national emergency, you would know that you would be safe because you would look after the country well. So I think it's a good result, but there's a long way to go. Now, Ken Clark has been uh, heard off camera, if you like, didn't know he was being recorded, saying that she's a very difficult woman. What do you say to that? Well, I'll tell you something. If, if I'd love my Prime Minister to be a difficult person because she, Theresa May, has got the, the experience and uh, she will stand up to people like Angela Merkel and Putin. And I think that's what we need. We need someone who's not going to say yes uh, at every opportunity, but someone who's going to stand up for Britain. Now, what about Michael Gove? Several Tory MPs have said to me they didn't like the way he entered the race, uh, accused him of knifing Boris Johnson. Do you think that's put some people off? I don't think Michael Gove liked the way he entered the race. I think he would have preferred to have come to the conclusion he came to a week earlier. I, I, I think that's a widespread view. But in the end, he decided that he had made a mistake and he needed to put it right, that he didn't want to put forward for Prime Minister somebody in whom he did not have confidence. So I think that was a powerful emotion for people on Friday with the shock of it and the shock of Boris's withdrawal, but I think it's an emotion that is dissipating quite rapidly, and people are looking at Michael's very considerable qualities, uh, the reforms as Education Secretary, as Lord Chancellor, and his very clear view on how we get out of the European Union. I think that's much more powerful than the circumstances of how he came to be a candidate. Uh, Ken Clark has said something about him as well, not knowing he was being recorded, saying that if Michael Gove became Prime Minister, we'd be invading two or three countries a year. The, the, the great Kenneth Clark has said mildly disobliging things about almost everybody, uh, and I think that's one of the dangers of um, not keeping one's counsel when in a television studio. Uh, uh, careless microphones don't quite cost lives, but they may cost good manners. And now, you have said, haven't you, that you would actually quite like a Brexiteer to be on the ballot. Do you think it's important for the Tory party that happens, or do you think actually you prefer Stephen Crabb to go through? Well, obviously, it must be up to the MPs to decide, but I think we need a proper contest. We need to have all arguments, and I think if uh, Theresa May gets the final round, as I, I'm sure she will, and she faces a Brexit candidate, all well and good, then the members will have their say. But I would say that, as I say, she's the unity candidate. She's bringing people from all wings of the party. She's bringing people who are Brexiters and who are Remainers. And she's going to unify the party, and she will unify the country as well. Do you think she's now unstoppable? I mean, she's an awfully long way ahead in this first round. Well, we've had a very good result tonight. And that, as I say, is because she's a compassionate Conservative, because she's a unity candidate, and because of her strength of character, but there is a long way to go. Anything can happen, and we're fighting hard for every vote. It looks like Michael Gove will be fighting, obviously, for that second place. How confident are you that he can get there, uh, given that Andrew Leadsom seems to have done pretty well? Well, there are 36 votes that Stephen Webb got and the 14 votes that Liam Fox got that are going to be up for grabs. I think it's important to remember that only 130 members of Parliament are backed leave, and that therefore there is an overwhelming majority in the House of Commons for a Remain candidate, and this explains a very good deal of Mrs May's strength in the first round, and it needs to be contextualised, because in the country at large, particularly in the Conservative membership, more people supported Leave than Remain, and that will be very 
very powerful for whichever Brexiteer uh, gets through to the final round. And I very much agree with Robert that it is important to have a contest that represents um, the Brexit view. Are you, either of you, concerned about how long this contest will take, given that we don't have, a, we do have a Prime Minister, but that with the circumstances that we are in, people think it's time to get on with it? Well, I think we are getting on with it. I think it's right that we have a serious contest. We're going to decide who is going to be the Prime Minister, not just the leader of the Conservative Party, but the Prime Minister of our country. It's very important that the MPs have the debate and the discussion and the votes, but also important that uh, the Conservative members up and down the country also have the debate and discussion and vote for the person that they most most want to lead us. As I say, I very much hope it will be Theresa May. And obviously you voted, you are in favour of Brexit. There are some people out there who are alarmed at what's happening with the, uh, with the FTSE, for example, worried about the economy. Um, do you not think it is time to have someone in pretty quickly to try and calm things down? I'd be very surprised if anyone's worried about the FTSE because it's higher than it was when we voted Found to Brexit. No, 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 but this is very important because there's ridiculous scaremongering coming and it, a lot of it, I'm sorry to say, is coming from the BBC that yes the pound has fallen but actually investors in our stock markets have been putting money in we should have confidence in our country and not this frightful defeatist approach I don't think this is necessary at all the Queen's government is being carried on by the Prime Minister he remains Prime Minister until somebody else is appointed there is no power vacuum and we should calmly and deliberatively and democratically find a new leader of the party but I do hope people will stop continuing Project Fear now they've lost. And what about, there's some people saying as well about those EU citizens who are currently in this country, that they are worried about what happens to them once the UK leaves the EU? They must be allowed to stay. It's quite immoral to play with their lives. That I don't believe any Conservative government or any British government would ever seek to remove people who came to this country lawfully and have a, essentially a lawful contract allowing them to be there. And I think to use them as pawns in a negotiation is fundamentally wrong. Uh, Theresa May has, I think, made the point that obviously if you're going into negotiation, you can't give away everything that you want at the time. Would you like, though, to see her say uh, about EU citizens that they should be allowed well, to stay? She has said, she said on Sunday, she said today again, that she would like to guarantee that every EU national can uh, stay here, and that's something I strongly support. But she's also said she wants to make sure that the millions of Britons who are living in, Euro in the European Union also have the same rights. And I think she's actually being honest. She's not saying she's going to make a promise that she can't keep. She's just wanting to guarantee the rights for those EU nationals here, but also the rights for Brits abroad. Okay. Thank you very much indeed Thank to the both of you. Much. Round one is over. Round two will come on Thursday. We have had a statement from Theresa May saying that obviously she's pleased with the result. She says there's a big job before us to unite our party and the country to negotiate the best possible deal as we leave the EU and to make Britain work for everyone. And she says she's the only candidate capable of delivering those three things as Prime Minister.